Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode to your favorite and the most informative program in the state of Kuwait, To The Point, where we shed some light on an important topic that touches our daily basis. Today, we will talk about more than one negative social phenomenon that comes as a result of various reasons. In 2005, Kuwait donated about $100 million in the aftermath of Kashmir, the earthquake, at the same year. Kuwait donated almost 60% of total assistance offered by foreign countries to Hurricane Katrina in the United States of America. Kuwait paid about $10 million in aid to Bangladesh in the aftermath of Cyclone Sidr. It also donated about $10 million also in 2013 to the typhoon Haiyan in Philippines. His Highness the Amir of Kuwait has offered an immediate donation for scientific researches to fight spread of Ebola, despite Kuwait is not affected by it. And here's a quick report. The Ebola uh, that we saw in 2014 is the biggest ever uh, outbreak in the 40-year history of Ebola. Kuwait has provided $5 million uh, for the big toe. We put those money to good use to strengthen surveillance and then to hire people to do contact tracing. The outbreak started with one case, and the outbreak will end with one case. We are still far from it, and it takes a lot of energy not to let them. As we have seen, natural catastrophes has happened around the globe. The sequence of such incidents leave a lot of negative social phenomena affecting youth in how to confront such losses. Some to turn to be victims of misconceptions of towards religions, cultural and human reactions toward each the United Nations. Development program decided to react towards some of those impacts through certain programs. And here's a quick look of exactly what we're talking about. In the 21st century, our globalized interconnected world is changing more rapidly than at any other time in human history. In the last hundred years, we have seen a doubling of human life expectancy. In the same period, the global population has risen from less than two billion people to nearly seven and a half billion. Technological innovation allows us to travel from one side of the planet to the other in a matter of hours and to communicate instantaneously. Amidst these dramatic changes, we face catastrophic challenges. Poverty, climate change, population growth, biodiversity and species loss, disease and conflicts with increasingly dangerous weapons, which leave huge numbers of our 21st century human community destitute, hopeless and helpless. We live in an age where, unfortunately, the number of humanitarian crises is escalating. Both man-made and natural conflicts and the crises are on the rise. We are still grappling with the previous crisis and suddenly something else comes up, you know. We are in front of something that certainly uh, is, is an unprecedented crisis. We have the largest displacement of people since the Second World War. The longer you go with the humanitarian crisis, the more needs and requirements come out or surface. There will be more efforts required, there will be more humanitarian assistance required in the next upcoming years. Globally, the budget for responding to these horrible complex emergencies is very, very stretched and more of the development dollar is having to be spent on the very short-term relief. So you can provide immediate response in terms of food and shelter. But what about the infrastructure? What about the, all other things, the health, education, and all of that uh, other supportive elements, uh, which are essential for a good quality of life? Uh? These issues, in the context of the global village in which we now live, threaten all of us. It is not possible to contemplate that we are going to have peace, stability, progress, when you're having these uh, aberrations, these dreadful catastrophes. In order to meet these challenges and ensure our future is one of prosperity, opportunity and human dignity for all, 
we require an attitude of shared responsibility for global problems, a respect and empathy for our neighbours around the world, a mindset of togetherness and fraternity across our global community. In order to achieve this, we need leadership which can inspire change and galvanise the international community to work together, putting others before themselves. You're still with us here on KTV2 to the point and we were talking about the catastrophes in the world and who is going to be better to talk about this. None other than the people from the United Nations and we have here on my right Mrs. Zainab Tuwimi bin Jilwan and she is United Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representatives, correct? That's right. And also we have another distinguished guest. Her name is Dima Al Khatib. And she's also from United Nations. To be precise, UNDP Deputy Resident Representatives. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we all know that the world it's it's not like a smooth sailing. Every once in a while we have some problems here and problems there, catastrophes, catastrophes and also earthquakes, diseases and plagues. What exactly the United Nations is doing to not to, you know, prevent all these things, but to contain it, correct? Mm -hmm. What exactly we're doing here in Kuwait and also the coordination with Kuwait and the rest of the world? Mm, that's right. Well, the United Nations, um, as you know, is uh, an organization uh, of member states, uh, which uh, in the development area, uh, develops in a participatory manner with all its member states a development agenda to be followed. The most recent one is uh, the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. That's wonderful. So in order to address, I mean, the whole philosophy behind it is that, I mean, you can address development issues, you can address catastrophes, you can uh, uh, address humanitarian issues, but all of these issues are all interlinked and they have to be addressed in a global manner. Mm. So all member states, through a very consultative manner with populations across the world, with uh, academics, the private sector, governments, came up with um, this sustainable, uh, this Agenda 2030 for development, uh, for uh, sustainable development, which, is ad which was adopted in 2015, September 25th, mm -hmm. in, uh, New at the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York. And in fact, uh, his, uh, Highness, the Emir of the State of Kuwait uh, was there as well and committed uh, the State of Kuwait to the implementation of these goals as well. That's wonderful. So I just want to turn the lights on Mrs. Dima. I do not want to feel left out from the conversation. Good evening once again. Good evening. Now, uh, like she mentioned earlier, that uh, the world is collaborating together to prevent some kind of uh, the disastrous uh, areas here and there. It, from your own point of view, what exactly the features and the, the, the points between the collaboration between Kuwait and the rest of the world? Because what, what we are concerning here that the Kuwait is exactly what is the, the amount of the contribution that they are given to the rest of the world? Right. Well, I mean, Kuwait, uh, out of all countries, is extremely well positioned in the area of supporting humanitarian and what we call resilience support. And by resilience, we mean uh, to support the countries of the world in adapting to disasters, as you refer to, or to uh, crises, or to different, uh, you know, issues that may arise. And Kuwait, historically, I mean, uh, we all know that uh, in 2014, His Highness the Emir was uh, nominated by the UN Secretary General as the humanitarian leader in recognition 
for all the contributions that Kuwait uh, under his leadership and, and wisdom has been contributing and supporting the world with. Uh, uh, Kuwait has been supporting the, the, the countries of the region in going through the different crises and, and uh, supporting the resilience approach for the different populations, uh, whether in, in countries going through crisis or post-crisis, in the Arab region and beyond. And this is a well-known fact uh, for which, uh, you know, uh, Kuwait has been recognized uh, progressively. Kuwait has been also hosting for the past few years uh, major international conferences, mobilizing the whole world to come together around supporting uh, countries of crisis. A point in case is the crisis in Syria. And the most recent uh, one, you know, that happened in London, Kuwait has co-organized with the UK uh, the international conference also for the crisis of Syria. The total, the total of contributions, I mean, uh, I don't have the figure for the overall contributions, but for the Syria crisis, it has bypassed, you know, any uh, uh, any donor, if we uh, if we might say, in the region, and you know, the contributions of Kuwait considered as part, it, it's reaching around two percent of its GDP, which is in normal, you know, official developed assistance, one of the highest rates around the world. Mm. So this is really something to be extremely proud of. Uh, and, uh, and this is only not by the government, also by the people of the state of Kuwait. They donated millions of, of dollars and sure. also some items for the winter necessities and sure. probably for Ramadan and etc. Sure. See, we do yeah, not want to neglect their role of the humanitarian aid, the people of the Kuwait and the people who are living in Kuwait. doesn't have to be all, all Kuwaiti yeah. citizens, lots of expats that they are donating the same thing. I want to turn to uh, Mrs. Uh, Tuwemi bin Jalwan. Am I saying it right? Bin Jalun. Bin Jalun, excuse me. <laughs> bin Jalun, let me write it down here. Bin Jalun, okay. Now, war have torn apart lots of countries here, in the Middle East to be more specific. And you have a significant role as a representatives from the United Nations to play a role and coordinate with uh, uh, the neighboring countries by giving aids to the people who are in need of the aids itself. They must have uh, some kind of a focal point of the country that is helping more than the others. Let's take Kuwait for instance, because we are uh, listening on the radios and reading a newspaper that uh, the Kuwaiti government are exerting more efforts to uh, bring peace to the region. So do you see eye to eye when you meet with the government of the state of Kuwait by achieving this goal? That's well, a long, long yeah, question. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> question. Yeah, I'm trying to see how to uh, address it. But okay. uh, I mean, I'll take up from what my uh, colleague uh, Dima said uh, earlier. I mean, uh, I think um, Kuwait's generosity in this area uh, does, has come with lots of experience. Um, over the years, both government and ci civil society have been able to, 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 to develop a certain expertise in terms of uh, development or humanitarian assistance especially. So in that sense, I mean, for example, if we take in terms of coordination, I think that was your question, mm. uh, Kuwait organized three pledging conferences for Syria. That's correct. In, during three so in those three years, if only for those pledging conferences, experience was gained by the state of Kuwait and its civil society organization in the coordination of these kinds of initiatives, which bring together uh, country, donor countries from around the world to contribute to the Syria crisis in this uh, case. Now for the organization uh, of these conferences, of course, we as the United Nations we partner with the state of Ku uh, Kuwait and support uh, the organization of this because uh, uh, many of, uh, I mean, it's our mandate and also uh, many of the uh, funds that are allocated by the donors through these uh, the, uh, conferences are allocated through UN agencies who work in the field. That's wonderful. So, and who have, for example, you have UNICEF, you have UNHCR, you have uh, UNDP, you have uh, N, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so it's co uh, coordination support as well as implementation support. We have outreach in these uh, 
uh, countries and uh, therefore we're able to help out in that respect. And she's your assistant here in the state of Kuwait? Sorry. Are you assi assisting the whole thing here in the state of Kuwait? Uh, well, alhamdulillah, we don't have any crisis going on in Kuwait, but uh -huh. we do <laughs> assist. I mean, United Nations Development Program supports the government of Kuwait and in, 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 in advancing its development agenda, if you will. So we do have a national program going on that supports in several areas. Uh, be it uh, socioeconomic aspects, be it environmental, be it human development, uh, be it governance and institutional excellence. And there is a fourth element that uh, Zainab was talking about, which is more supporting the partnership role and the positioning of Kuwait at the regional and global arenas. Uh, this is basically, uh, in a nutshell, the areas that we work on as United Nations Development Program. That's wonderful. We have a quick report about that humanitarian uh, the state of Kuwait they call it the state of the humanitarian people and the leadership yeah. let's take a look and come back with us leadership and funding has saved tens of thousands of lives and has galvanized others to participate in coordinated international action it is good to know that we can count on Kuwait's generosity and particularly His Highness Emir of Kuwait. Such solidarity and generosity is needed more than ever. I urge more states in the world to come forward with assistance. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I have uh, some kind of uh, an inquiry in mind. I would love for you to tell us uh, how the United Nations system supporting its implementation in the state of Korea. Yes. Well, uh, I mean, um, we support the, the, the state of Kuwait. In Kuwait, we support uh, the, the implementation of uh, the, the, the country's development agenda. And uh, we do that in the context, uh, especially now in the context of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals to which the state of Kuwait has committed. So we support as a, system, as a United Na Nations system, we advocate for the goals, we do um, uh, presentations, we, do, we, we raise awareness on the uh, various goals. We also... Um, try to do advocacy on the goals on the occasion of international days for example international women's day we do advocate for gender equality for uh, world environment day we advocate for environmental sustainability un day we advocate for all what the goals what happened to the man's day <laughs> <laughs> what happened question. that was the first the we need people to defend <laughs> us honestly <laughs> We are you being are the Turks people. Turk skewed, honestly. <laughs> what do you think? How well grounded is this statement? Now I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you were saying about the Women's Day? So, the Women's Day, the Environment Day, the UN Day. So, uh, these are all opportunities for advocacy. We also support, uh, support uh, the government in implementing the goals through our programming. For example, uh, we, uh, one of the priorities of the government, if you know, and of the country of uh, Kuwait, is to promote the role of the private sector in the implementation of the National Development Plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so we try to support that partnership, and we do it in the framework, in partnership with the government and the private sector, of the relevant sustainable development goals, so that the agreed commitments are smoothly integrated. The, the, the commitments that have already been taken are smoothly in, uh, undertaken by all and facilitate this dialogue between the government and the private sector and favor the development of the country. Uh, envi environmental sustainability, it's the same case. We address, we, we support the government in addressing the goals and targets in, in, in this relevant uh, sustainable development goals concerning environment for their implementation, and so on and so forth. 
So, um, so we, you know, we as, as a UN system and each agency, either together with the others or in its specific, uh, in its specific uh, area of comparative advantage, we try to provide the technical uh, expertise to the state of Kuwait to implement uh, its international and national commitments and therefore further the prosperity of its people. That's wonderful. That means you provide everything except, uh, you know, the kitchen sink. That's the way they say it. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we provide the technical support and the advocacy That's and the wonderful. partnership. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I, w I have some kind of... A Something, uh, it's pu it puzzles me a lot. Explain to me the, the JPOS, what is it? Very good. JPOs is the Junior Program Officers Program. Junior Program, Junior program Officer. Officers. Uh -huh. This is an initiative uh, launched by the United Nations, uh, you know, across the world and basically supported by donor countries. Mm. Kuwait is among the leading countries that has been pursuing uh, the promotion or the advancement, if you will, of uh, young Kuwaitis uh, in the UN uh, career uh, uh, process using uh, this JPO program. So this JPO program have been initiated in Kuwait uh, through, uh, uh, now we're launching a third phase actually. So, so far we have recruited 20 young uh, Kuwaitis who have been uh, working in different UN agencies around the world, not only United Nations Development Program, but in, in other agencies. And they have been also, uh, you know, trained and exposed to international affairs, to, do, to the development agenda. Some, some of them have been working on the ground in different countries. Uh, we will be next, uh, I mean, in the coming month, uh, inshallah, launching the recruitment of another uh, uh, batch of 10 Kuwaiti JPOs who will be placed in different UN agencies around the world. And this is uh, something very unique to Kuwait uh, because people are either continuing their career within the UN system or coming back to the country and reinvesting that exposure and that knowledge into uh, the country itself. And it's one of the, I mean, Kuwait is well known for this pioneering program and we always use it as a very good example. Not Thank only you for the compliment. You're most welcome. No, Not saying. only in terms of advancing the youth, but also in terms of empowering them and giving them the knowledge and the expertise to be able to use it, you know, whether diplomatically or coming back to the country or, uh, you know, in different disciplines. And you were talking about people who are still in schools, correct? Because <laughs> I have met some of them yeah. in different programs and they traveled to the United Nations <coughs> and they acted like they were ambassadors to their to the world this is the united nations uh, schools uh, system uh -huh. you know uh, model model that's UN. The UN. sorry that's, that's the, the model, model. That's UN. Exactly what happened but to these me. are professionals yeah these uh -huh. are they work yeah. i mean they actually they these are yeah. uh, young people with at least a bachelor's degree and a couple of yeah. years of experience who are recruited mm -hmm. uh, who are selected to to work to work as yeah. uh, professionals to work and deliver and uh, you know be, be part of, of in uh, uh, UN different teams. UN agencies yeah. mm, maybe you might include me the next time <laughs> sure thank you <laughs> you have to apply <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to I have you here <laughs> anyway uh, Mrs. Bin Jalloun correct mm -hmm. that's correct that's the first time <laughs> okay uh, you have a national partner in the state of Kuwait correct yeah. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. We have many national partners. Such as? Our main partners, okay, are the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, of course, and uh, the, 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 the Ministry of uh, Planning and the General Secretariat for the Supreme Council for Planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are the primary partners. Then we partner with the line ministries, uh, environment, uh, public authority for disability, youth, information, uh, and then we also partner with civil society organizations or with uh, and with the private sector.